Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. I would like to thank everybody for inviting me. This is a great opportunity. Thank you, Max, for putting together Tania and Dr. Howard and all these excellent, great colleagues. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, so uh, when we talk about cancer, of course, we have to focus on carcinogens. So this is why we're here and this, this is why we're talking about cancer. So talking about the carcinogens is the most important point here that we have to focus on. All right, so uh, we have a list of them, uh, and this is the information that we have because of measurement that have been done on the settled dust. The settled dust is the dust that deposits after uh, whatever happens, so we, we, you can collect this dust, and you can do a lot of analysis, and that analysis is extremely, extremely important for our knowledge. This is a first, always exposure assessment, it's called, exposure sciences. This is a very important field for us in occupational environmental health because we are dealing with exposure constantly, so we need to know uh, very well, as much as we can, what are we dealing with. So in terms of exposure, in terms of the analysis in the deposited dust, we have chrysotile asbestos. Everybody knows about asbestos, and so I don't need to talk about this further because it's a very powerful carcinogen. So unfortunately, it was present in the buildings. When the building collapsed, huge amount of asbestos came out of, uh, and that, that became the exposure. Then we had, well, lead is another carcinogens according to IARC, and now, nowadays, then PCBs, polychlorinated uh, by phenols, uh, and benzene. Benzene is, is another important carcinogen. We know about benzene for many, we've known for many years in occupational health. And uh, the list goes on with dioxin and, uh, and, and diesel. So this is a mix of carcinogens that uh, is unprecedented. So I think uh, this is an important knowledge for us to maintain. Uh, of course, we are exposed to carcinogens, unfortunately, every day. We breathe carcinogens. We are in, exposed to them. But that was a particular story. Well, that was a special moment where the people, the responders, the workers, and the survivors and the community were exposed to high, a high mix of carcinogens. And not only that, our knowledge about these carcinogens uh, is based on the exposure to each one of them, all right? So here we have a, a mixture, a co-exposure to different carcinogens. So the knowledge that exists about this exposure, co-exposure to a mix of car carcinogens is not exactly the knowledge that we have based on each one of them. So this is an important point to maintain. Uh, before coming to this program in 2012, I you can tell by my accent, I, I've been working for 20 years in, the, in, the, in northern Italy in the area of Milan. In that area in the 70s, there was an outbreak of uh, uh, dioxin because of the first episode of a toxic cloud that uh, it was an industrial accident. And in that case was the exposure to dioxin, just one chemical that happened to be a carcinogen too. And uh, research in that case was very, very important. Even now, many years later, research is still going on. And uh, it's very important also as an example of this kind of relationship with the community where, con where it's important to maintain feedback and between the researchers and the, and the, and the members of the, of the programs. So, it's important, this knowledge about uh, the exposure, and it's important for us to, uh, to, 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 to study about the health effects. It's not easy, it's, uh, it's an important uh, challenge. Uh, we have to collect data, and we need to match data with registries, registries for many states, because we have to collect the numbers of all these cases, of these cancers. So this is a very, very important uh, challenge and it's a very important activity that is ongoing, basically. Uh, what we know, and actually I would say that as Dr. Moline just said, the importance of this is there is a, a latency period bec before these cancers are, uh, are, 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 are actually uh, identifiable. So before waiting for the latency period, it was very, very important for the program to recognize that cancer can be certified and treated by the program. So this is very, very important. 
Uh, it's important to continue with the research or because we need to know uh, the details, we need to know whether there are other emerging problems, but it's important that the program actually has this opportunity to treat cancers that are affecting the, the responders and the community. Uh, the first studies, I think three important studies came out in 2012, 2013. These are the first studies that came out from the federal, uh, from the, the firefighters, the registry and the general responder, the general consortium. Uh, these three studies were actually done in more or less the same time, but the data were updated to 2008. So now we need to update all this information. But already there in 2008, it was already clear that there was an excess of all types of cancer and especially of uh, uh, thyroid, prostate, but also some other cancers like uh, melanoma not restricted to the skin and non Hodgkin, Hodgkin lymphoma and multiple my myeloma. So this was the first evidence that came out in, in those years. And now we are continuing uh, to update these results and it's going to be important to uh, understand what's going to happen in the future. Uh, there is an important uh, new uh, study which is actually being funded and uh, this study will be actually a one merged cohort and this is going to be a cohort of uh, FDNY, the general responder cohort and the registry. This is going to be a very powerful uh, new study because the three cohorts will be merged into one. So this is going to be a more statistic, a, a better statistical power, a, a kind of more uniform access to the cases and a better, better scientific approach in a way than before because it's going to be everything in one only study. And uh, we're just uh, starting now to uh, collect data and to work on all the procedures, IRBs and all the a uh, complicated, I would say, process that will make this happen. So I will stop here. So hopefully this is uh, enough for now. And uh, uh, an important point I would say one more time, it's important that this program has cancer as a, identify, as a certifiable condition already. And it's also important that research is continuing to clarify and to give us more information and updates of what's going on in the long term. Thank you for your attention.